Always remember to do your own research as some of the tools that I'm about to show in this series are very new. Welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very excited today to show you the new updates that I've added to the Art Creator Studio. Very excited, like I said. Now, firstly, I didn't only update the art engine, but also updated the hashtips.io website. I felt like it's time, it's 2025, so why not have a new website? So feel free to go and check it out at hashtips.io. You can do interesting things like run a simulation and uh, view the source code. Also look at the OG code that's out there as well. So feel free to check it out. But what we are interested in is the tool section. So as you can see here, we've got the original art engine. This is the pure code first version of the art engine we also have the uh, v2 which is a completely different art engine but it's just known as version 2 which is more made for developers and then the art creator studio which is the ui version that i'm going to discuss in today's video so i'm going to click on try art engine and then here you can go to studio.deveffer.io if you want to find it directly note that on this page i do say that this is in development and testing and not advised to use yet Although I'm saying this, it is really to just emphasize that features might change as you use it because I am constantly pushing updates uh, to this art engine. And so I don't want you to feel disappointed when a feature suddenly starts behaving differently. So just note that when you are looking and playing around with the tool. Down here, we're going to accept the terms and conditions, click on continue, provided that we have a uh, meta mask with the polygon network connected now i'm not going to show all the bells and whistles of the art engine as there's tons of videos where i started explaining how to use this tool in previous videos that will be linked in this playlist as well i want to focus on the updates the new things that you can experience apart from a bit of ui updates to the nav bar and uh, sections like these there are some specific tools that I want to share with you today. So for me to explain this, the first thing I'm going to do is go and add some data. So the data that I'm going to add is a collection which has backgrounds, clothing, face, uh, props, and the usual things we need to make generative art. Next, what I'm going to do is rename my collection. Let's call it the Sketchy uh, Apes 2, um, seeing that these are the Sketchy Ape layers. For the symbol, we're going to do SABC, maybe SABC2. Then next, I'm going to go and add a group by clicking on this plus icon and just rearranging. So I've got my background, then the fur, then the face, then the props, and I don't need this x-ray for now. I'm going to rename this to maybe my group one and create another group by clicking on the plus icon, rearranging this as well, and then maybe keeping the x-ray but removing the props and this too and this will be our group two for now cool so now we've got group one and group two we can also set the generation amount i'm going to make this five and for group two five as well i'm then going to go and click back on this media library so we can see our media preview now the media preview has changed a tiny bit it no longer automatically generates the previews. You have to click on this refresh icon up here. Also notice on the right hand corner over here at the bottom, there is a spinner as well popping up. This is to show a process that's running. I made this so that we could see when something is busy processing and to know if the UI is in a standstill, which used to happen, which no longer should happen. The other thing I've added is the group selection. So here you can select a group and then as you do so, you can see that it selects the correct group here in the panel as well. That didn't used to happen. And in order to uh, see your group, you had to click on your group and then see your render. It also works in the inverse. If you select a group here at the bottom, you can see the drop down tool select change. And if you do so, you do need to click on the refresh. It's always just good to click on refresh to know that you're seeing the latest render. However, this is not all because this was a tiny update. The new update that I've made was on the group preview here. So what the group preview is, it's a visual way for you to see your probability 
of the individual traits. So basically, if we look at this face trait and we click on this, we can see there's a probability. Now, a common question I get asked is, should all these probabilities add up to 100? Well, that's a good way for you to gauge kind of relatively how rare a trait should be. So I would say the answer is yes and no. You can also make this probability a thousand and it will still work. It is all relative to the other traits um, in that uh, layer, basically. But by keeping it to a hundred or a thousand, just relative to the other traits does make it helpful. For example, if I wanted this trait to be very rare, I make the probability five. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a tiny slither of purple popping up there. The same will happen if I make this trait probability one. You can see there's a tiny bit of orange popping up for a legendary trait because it's relative to all these traits in the same layer. Now this can help you going through each layer, setting the probability to what you want so that you can get a good looking graph. What starts happening is if we start going crazy with it. So for example, if I click on mix all layers here, and now you can see everything is orange, even if I click on it again. Well, what's happening here is if you look at the traits itself, it puts the uh, probabilities really random to the point where some of them are minus one and it just goes all out crazy. So I want you to be careful with this option, especially this will happen if your group generation cannot hold the amount of traits that you have. So for example, it's relative to the generation amount. So let's up this generation amount to let's say a thousand. Click it again. And now you can see it starts giving us a bit more realistic view of what's happening. There's a lot of common indicated by this big green here and a lot of legendaries, but that's again, because we have hundreds of traits. And so what this means is it looks like there's going to be a ton of legendaries in your collection and maybe so, but it's only indicating which ones are very low probability. So your collection might still be mostly common and some might be legendary because all of these tiny legendary traits adds up to the visuals. So I just want you to understand that uh, what you are seeing here is basically if you scroll down, the probabilities that match the traits like so. And so this view here will give you a better understanding of which traits are going to be showing up more. For example, the background paper trait is 790%. Pumpkin orange is only 92%. And it goes down to all these one percenters, which are legendary. That's why mixing it up like that's not the best for big collections like these. And better for you to go through each individual one and set the specific probability. You would like to see an even distribution of a lot of green, a bit of blue, a less of purple, and then very minuscule amounts of orange. But if you have big collections like these, obviously you're going to have a lot of unique NFTs, which would result in a lot of legendary um, generative artworks. It's just a nice visual way to see what you are busy doing uh, down here, because this doesn't directly correlate uh, to the percentages and this is a different view for you to use and of course as time goes on i'm going to work on a simulation function where you can actually simulate and uh, the actual what it is going to generate so you might see your probabilities here and the simulation will give you that absolute you know answer of what you are going to generate for the next feature to explain it i need to do a generation so i'm going to head over to the x uh, porter panel and here I do have my groups and I made them five again each. And on the collection, maybe on the generation tab, I'll mix the items. And on the export tab, we're going to set the name. So here I'm going to maybe call this SABC. And for the description, this is my NFT maybe. And then external URL, we're going to leave empty. Um, media prefix, we're going to leave empty for now. And let's export this with Ethereum metadata. Now let's go ahead and select generate. Once this has generated the 10 NFTs, I can now give access to a folder and then we can click on render. It's going to tell us to remember to save. And yes, I do want to save. So I'm going to click on save my configuration and then click on render. So with Decentral Art, how it works is 
after you have generated, you'll take your images, upload it to Arweave, and then come back and change this prefix. The problem was people would have already generated this and the, that step might take some time, right? And then they come back and they have to kind of get access again to do this. And I wanted to make it a bit easier for them. And that's what this next step is all about. That being said, now we have our media, which are these NFTs. And we also have the metadata, which is in the Ethereum folder. Great. Now you can see that we've got the image here is missing. So technically what people used to do is they would just keep this configuration after they've saved it, go and upload their files to Arweave, come back to the generation, turn off the media render, keep Ethereum, and then just add the prefix here. So maybe it would be HTTPS and then uh, test forward slash, or the test would be the Arweave link, right? And then this would include their prefix, right? But now you have to get access again. So instead I made a tool section. Now in the tool section, we've got two tools. The one is the JSON updater tool and the other one is the collection checker tool. Now both tools are very useful because once you have your generated collection with your images and metadata, you want to start off by just uh, putting it into the collection checker tool. What this is going to do is it's going to check the media and make sure that it matches the metadata. And it's going to do so for the Ethereum or Solano subfolders as well. So let me drag and drop the renders in here and see what it does. So right off the bat, we can see a lot of red, meaning that we need to fix a few things, right? So here we can see that there's a required image field missing on six, the same because this is on the Ethereum field, it's required. And we can also turn on warnings and see that the external URL is a warning, but that's not going to affect the result. So we can turn the warnings off. But in here in the verification results, we can see that we've got 10 media files and 10 metadata files, which means that there are 10 matching pairs, which is correct. We just have a bunch of errors. And these errors are speaking about the image field and the JSONs being empty, which we can fix. However, this view also gives us interesting metrics, like the total items being used, the trait types, how many trait types there was, and then total traits used. For example, it gives us the rarest and most common and rarest artwork. Now these stats you need to take with a grain of salt, especially these top three ones, because there could be many rarest artworks. What is cool to see and what you can have a look at are the individual traits. How many was used of the specific paper? 60% of the collection used that, 30% used the pumpkin orange and so forth. So here you can get real stats of seeing what the actual collection holds. All right, cool. So let's go and see how we can fix this now. Now this is where the other tool comes in handy. You can go to the JSON updated tool and let's drag that same folder in here. Firstly, we can see all of the 10 metadata files in here. Then we have the nice field updater, um, add field, remove field, and we've got a JSON preview. So by default, this one is added. So if I just make this empty and actually just remove this field completely, you can see the default state of this actual uh, preview. Now, what happens is if I add a field, you will see if I enter image, you can see image disappears because there is no value currently for that image. So this program will remove a field if the value here is empty. For example, here on engine on hashlips, maybe you want to remove it. Well, then go and add a field and say engine and that will be removed. Also, if I now go into image and I say, well, I do have my value, which is HTTPS. Let's just make up a Arweave link or so. Put forward slash, you can see this is the outcome, but we want to use the ID. So we put the squiggly brackets and just in lowercase ID, and then you see it pops in six because it correlates. And then right after the squiggly brackets, you can do .png or whatever format this then is. And you can do this for many fields, change and adapt things and use the high level ones in squiggly brackets to get those values injected. This is just a nicer way for you to afterwards update the JSON. 
So whatever is happening here will be updated on all of these files. So let me click on export now. And there we have it, it's exported. The export will export a zip file which contains all of the metadata JSON files. You can then go and replace that in your collection. And then once you have done so, we can go back to the collection checker, drag that folder back in here, and now see that our collection checks out. We can see that by the check mark. Keep in mind, this does check only the high level structure, things that has to do with images, um, properties, attributes, those high level items that a usual uh, non-fungible token has. Anyway, this is a great way for you to just validate your uh, metadata and see that everything is now fine. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed today's video and the updates. And also let me know in the comments if you've tried it out and what you think, what should change. If you find any errors, let me know too, because I always am developing on it and trying to improve it so that you guys have a lovely time generating cool artworks. I'm going to be using this tool myself a lot as well uh, for my upcoming exhibition. So I'm trying to add things that I will need as well in that process. That's going to make it a bit more smoother for me to use. So yeah. With that, I hope you have a fantastic day. I'm going to be taking part in a few hackathons coming up as well, which I'll share some videos on. But till next time, I'll see you in the next video. Have a beautiful day.